All right. Now that we have created our conceptual structure or the model in our smart PLS4, we are now going to on with the measurement model. That's the first step in the assessment of your model. So let's look into the steps that we're going to follow first, and then we'll move on to our software. Now, when you're doing the measurement model assessment, there are four things that you need to do. First, you would need to assess the item reliability. We are going to do that through the outer loading. Then we need to look into the construct consistency. For that, we'll use the composite reliability, convergent validity. That will be done through average variance extracted. And last but not the least, discriminant validity. This is something that we're going to work through, HDMT ratio. Let's move into our smart PLS4. So here we are. So here we are with our model. The first thing that we're going to do here is click on calculate. Then right first option that we have over here is PLSM algorithm our same old PLSM algorithm. Click on that. Now, this dialog box would appear over here. Click on factor. Now, the smart PLS4, it gives you an option whether you want to get the results in a standardized form or you want to have it in the unstandardized form or mean-centered. But for now, we're just going to run it in standard, standardized form and rest everything would be on default. Just one thing that we're going to keep it on factor. Click on start calculation. And here you go. All the results have been calculated. Click on the report here. And when you are in report, we'll go through all those four things one by one. If you remember, we talked about item reliability or item consistency, and that is something that we are going to look at from the outer loading. Now, outer loading, when I click on the outer loading, it gets me the whole chart here. Now, when you click on the outer loading, you will see this chart over here, the matrix that is showing you the loading of the items on their relative constructs. The check value over here is 0 0.708. If the value of the outer loading is greater than this, this value, you're good to go. But if it is less than this value, that's when we need to make the decisions. I have one value that is red and I need to decide about it. If this value is red, it's greater than 0.4, but it is less than 0 0.7808. Uh, we would check Another criteria, quality criteria. We'll click, click on the construct reliability and validity. If my average variance extracted, that is green for that particular construct, then I'll keep it. Even if it is less than 0 0.708, greater than 0 0.4, but the AVE is bigger than 5.5, I can keep that item. So all my outer loadings are good to go. I'm just clicking on it one more time. Good thing that it has made it easier for the researchers to copy the results. I'll click on the list over here and then I'll click on copy to Excel and I'll click control V and all my outer loadings are there in one column. Really nice to see this. Okay. now. What we're going to do next, we're going to work on the construct consistency. And this is what we have here. We're going to work on composite reliability. And for the composite reliability, it should be greater than 0 Now for the composite reliability, it should be greater than 0.7. So let's get back to our smart PLS. Where do we get the composite reliability? Under this tab of quality criteria, we have construct reliability, click on that. And this is our table that we are going to look at. I'm copying it, 
copy to Excel. Everything is green, so I don't need to worry about it. All the values in the composite reliability are greater than 0.7, and that's a good news. Now, before copy pasting it, let's look into one more criteria, then we'll move this data into the Excel sheet. The next thing that we need to look at is the convergent validity, and the convergent validity would be checked through average variance extracted. The average variance extracted should be greater than 0.5. We'll look at that. Look at all these values that we have here. They're all greater than 0.5. So I'm going to copy it to the Excel, and I'm bringing it here to my Excel file. Click on a cell from where you want to start and click Control V. So I'm just going to quickly drag and drop all these values on the required places. Now, I would delete this column of the constructs here. And I will also delete the Cronbeck Alpha and also the RHO. Because as per here at all 2022, we, the, the composite reliability and average variance extracted, these are the only th two things that we need to report when we are assessing the measurement, measurement model. So, uh, we are done with our convergent validity, and now we are moving on towards our discriminant validity. Uh, right under this construct reliability, we have another tab, which is discriminant validity. We'll click on that, and we'll click on HTMT ratio over here. And this table that we get over here, it's giving us the HTMT ratios. We'll click on copy. Now, the HTMT ratio for discriminant validity should be greater than 0.85 as per Klein 2011, but there's another reference for 0.9 as well. So I'm going to use that reference by gold, uh, and that says that your discriminant validity can be up to 0.9. So I have here, they have sufficient discriminant validity, and... Um, my data is good to go. So now this completes my measurement model assessment. If you have any questions, you may please ask them in the comments. I'll be happy to get back to you. Please subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any future videos. Hope to see you again in other videos. Bye for now.